I have a good question for you. Yes, sir. Like when you were real, real small. Like now. <laughs> no. When you were when you were real young. What did you uh what did you think you wanted to be when you grew up? You know, I was blessed in that sense, because I've always known I wanted to play music, I always known I wanted to play drums. I've been playing in clubs since I was five. Oh, you have? Yeah. Where did you start? Where did you grow up? I, I was born in Baltimore, Maryland. I come from a family. Yeah. I have an older brother who plays trumpet piano, and my younger brother plays trumpet. And my father was always, you know, born in the club. He mm -hmm. I was it growing up in in Baltimore. It's, Baltimore is like a twin city to Toledo a lot. There's water there and a port, and they, and uh, you, you know I don't. How was it growing up in Baltimore? It was, it was nice. It was good. It was, you know, it was, it was a lot of history there. You know, Billy Holiday's from there. Um, oh, okay. kind of other, you know. Um, you know, great musicians. So did you have? Did you have? Uh, Aspirations from any of the musicians, you think, or just from your family mostly? Pretty much from family, because that was the first thing I saw. You know, family, and then the things that you would get a chance to see on television, you know, whenever Louis Armstrong was mm -hmm. on TV. It was a big deal with Sammy Davis Jr. Well, who's a, for, who do you think the first big, big name you met that you ever met personally and got to talk to or anything? Big name I ever met. Yeah. Are we ready? Well, that would have probably been. Uh, musically. Yeah, musically. That might have been uh, like Woody Shaw. Woody Shaw's band. Big wow, big band stuff. No, that wasn't a big band. It was you know it was, it was small, but I think that time it might have been. Uh, Victor Lewis, Clint Houston, maybe Larry Willis. Mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Those were, you know, some some of the you know first guys. So did your brothers? Your, did your brothers first first start out and then bring you along, or or what? My you... older brother was already playing, but I mean he was like nine years older. So when he was in high school mm -hmm. and he was you know learning, then I kind of picked it up, you know. Start a plan on so do you were you were playing at like way way younger than almost anybody that I've heard of, like five years old. Yeah. Were you know, playing drums? Yeah. Playing drums. So, what other instruments do you play? Well, drums is pretty much it. I, I, I tinkle, you know, diddle diddle at the piano, mm -hmm. you know, for writing purposes and you know, a whole host of other percussion instruments. Like if you have any of my CDs, you know, I play djembe. I also play the balafon. Do you overdub those or, or how, do they, how does that? A lot of times I try to do everything just like we would do it on the band. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times uh, from the balafon, I just turn and I can, I'll play the balafon. Oh, okay. And still play, probably play the bottom half. My feet on, keep my That's feet right. on the drum. Oh, good. I play the balafon. I have the djembe drummer. He plays along with me. Or the band plays along with me. Then I just switch over, the turn, and, and play the drums. But I try to the CDs try. Make it as much as, the, as we are live. I have, uh, I uh, do, do quite a bit of videos of, of musicians, and I, I recently in the last couple of years, I've tried to catch drummers more, simply because they tend to be in the background, and you really don't, you hear what they're doing, but you kind of don't see what they're <laughs> see doing. How they do it. Right, right. Yeah, but the, I got some nice shots of you up there too. Uh, do you know Alan White from Yes? Do you ever uh, uh, follow that no, progressive rock? Yeah. Okay, just wondered. He's a he's a progressive rock drummer. Right. So so you found out when you were a, you think you were about five. You found out you wanted to be in music and wanted to be a drummer. Right. Oh yeah, yeah, about five or six years old. Yeah, but I didn't get introduced to, to jazz until I was about ten. Mm -hmm. so about, about ten or eleven years old. So what were you playing before, yeah. like Motown or something? Motown mm -hmm. and those things of you know the time the R and B, mm -hmm. Sly and the Family Stone. Oh, that's right. You know, yeah. and, my, and, and uh, my brother had a band to go play cabarets and things in Baltimore, and I would be a feature if I ever get a chance to come in and play a couple of tunes. Then by the time I was nine, ten years old, I became the regular drummer. And it was a club we had a gig at in Atlanta, Georgia, every weekend. So every Friday and Saturday, when I was ten years old, I knew where I was at. I had so, a so when you, so about how old were you when? Uh, you were on your first uh, album. There were LPs at that time, I think, uh, vinyl, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, the Harper Brothers Band, we were one of the last group, I think, us and maybe Roy Harper, we were one of the last, you know, of, of that generation 
of guys to do LPs. So like our first records were like LP, cassette tapes, and CDs. Oh, that's right. So you just uh, evolved. Now it's, uh, the CDs are even yeah, out, huh? Yeah, yeah. Now CDs are. You just uh, you just do it. So uh, so what, what? Do you remember the first album you were on? Remember the day that that came out, or you heard yourself? Being played was that kind of exciting? Oh Always. And the very first, I think uh, the first thing I did was a gospel record. Oh, it was from Atlanta, Georgia. That was the very first thing I had a chance mm -hmm. to record. Because I, so on the weekends in Atlanta, sometimes I would go play for the church. You know, Sunday there was a choir that I was playing for, and they recorded. So that was one of the very first things I did where I had a chance. You know to hear myself. And mm -hmm. then after that, by the time I got to college, I think I had to play some percussion stuff on Howard University's, one of their records. And then after that, it was, uh, you know, hearing myself, you know, do live sessions or hearing things back from the radio. Mm -hmm. um, so they in Atlanta, they'd play it on the radio. So like in, in Toledo, they didn't have any jazz in Toledo. Well, I mean, I mean, Atlanta was struggling for jazz then too. But mm -hmm. like I said, some of the things I was playing in Baltimore, in Atlanta was pretty much gospel. I did play some mm -hmm. jazz, but Atlanta wasn't a big jazz town. Mm -hmm. it, it still isn't. I mean, we, but by the time you would leave D.C., oh, it would get scarce. You're right. Uh, Detroit, uh, WJZZ in Detroit, uh, was was one of the stations that that right. had played jazz, and um, I think there was one in uh, Los Angeles too. But oh yeah, L.A. has, has a good jazz station. Yeah. But they, they, you know, all around the country, they're becoming far and few, mm -hmm. which is a shame because we need them. We need more of them. But um, we still have, like, a couple in the New York area. You know, have something in Philly. Um, but by the time you get out of D.C., you know, it gets a little slim. So, yeah, you were right around the corner being uh, in Baltimore. So you could just, like, you were just almost home. You could go to D.C. and you could bop, bop up to see your friends and your relatives, probably. Pretty much, because we left D.C. when I was, like, 10 years old. Mm -hmm. So from 10 to... 18, I was in Atlanta, Georgia. And, and you were playing from 10 to 18, huh? I was still playing, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, what about your your first piece that you did? Was that gospel, the first one that you did? The first th first thing that I, w I had been recorded on was gospel with a choir in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. uh, my first session with my band pretty much would have been with Betty Carter. Mm. Uh, and that never came out. Oh, it didn't? What a record came out. Uh, when I was, those years I was with Betty Carter, uh, she was nice enough to, you know, we always played a two, a trio tune, one or two trio tunes in front of her coming up to warm the crowd up, and then Betty would come up. But whenever we played around New York, around the area, uh, where, where we were, she would let my guys come from my band. So, Great. Thank you. So, if we were playing in New York, Yes, ma'am. If we were playing in New York for the area, my brother and whoever the other saxophone player was with the band, mm -hmm. she would allow them to come and play with the trio. So it was pretty much, you know, the Harper Brothers band playing in front of Betty Carter. So at that time, I mean, it was I think Don Braden was in the band, Philip, Benny Green, and Michael Bowie on bass maybe that was the, kind of the first mm -hmm. thing so we would you know we would play in front of Betty but then when she got ready to do her recording she allowed us to come to the studio and we did two tracks we were supposed to have an opening track and a closing track but did you do this in Atlanta? no this was this was by the time I got to New York oh New York but, okay. but that was the first recording of you know of the Harper Brothers so you're living in New York now yeah I'm in New York now oh how do you like where, where in like downtown Manhattan or anything I mean I'm, actually I'm over in, on the Jersey side I'm in Jersey City okay New, yeah New Jersey but I love it I mean it's close it's close to New York where everything's happening you're right and, it, and uh you don't have to New pay Jersey. as much money but New, yeah, New Jersey, it was used to be where it wasn't ex as expensive as New York, but now everything's expensive. But the good thing about it, it, it allowed us to have the Jersey happenings and work in Jersey, mm -hmm. Jersey City, Newark, and all those places, as well as having access to New York. How often are, do you think you're playing now? You're playing a couple times a week? Oh, sometimes more. Wow. Now, at this point, I've established uh, a couple of spots in Jersey City. So I have a regular Friday night when I'm, whenever I'm in town. We have a jam session on Friday nights. I have a, now a Thursday night at, at Liberty State Park where the Statue of Liberty is. There's a restaurant there called oh, Liberty House. So we okay. have a regular Thursday as well. 
and the first Sunday of every month I have jazz concerts, as well as some other things I'm doing around Jersey is, and, and working around New York, doing things for jazz mobile. Do you have a family? Do you have uh, oh, yeah. married and have kids? Yeah. How old are the kids? Huh? How old are the children? Oh, man, all ages. Are they? <laughs> you name it. Good. <laughs> I have a lot of kids. You know? Oh, do you? I have a lot of kids. Uh, how? I have five grandkids. Oh, you do? Oh, good. Yeah, I have, me too. I've got grandkids too. I've got, I just had a great grandson last year. Oh, you year, haven't so. got to that point. Well, yet. I know. <laughs> <laughs>